one piece of housekeeping. So it's clear that the license for the work that we do is open, right? Yes. Right, because that's something that we're very careful about. Because, for example, today we were t talking to the guy on the aquaponics. Um, his name was Dan Popovici, who's working on the aquatic worms and black soldier fly. And we were talking all open source, but it turns out that the license that he's choosing is probably like an NC style license. In other words, he allows us to use the techniques, but he doesn't... I'm sorry, you're breaking up. Yeah. Um, say that again? Yeah, what I'm saying that he's letting us use the materials on breeding black soldier fly and aquatic worms, but it's actually the license for that is probably turning out to be something like non-commercial which is not an uh, open source license because open source allows copying using or selling or doing whatever you want with it so um just wanted to make sure because if we take his material the thing that's relevant for us is if someone down the road tries to sue us because we're showing we're showing uh, proprietary and like patented information because he's actually he actually is getting a patent but he's letting us use it and he's letting anybody use it for home use but not not for commercial use where people just want to make money off it so so that's actually not open source in a technical sense so it's just one thing we ran into today which made me just want to bring this up yeah no, exactly, and that's that's what all we do. It's it's funny because sometimes I talk to people and it's like, oh yeah, of course it's open source, and then you, it turns out that it's really not open source, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, we know that uh, here, uh, the license that we use typically is C Creative Commons by by SA for the work and the published designs and things. Yeah. Okay. Let's um, so let's go right into the. The welder. So, Paul, what, what do we want to talk about? Say that again. So, what do, what would we like to talk about? What do we want to start with? I can't hear you. What should we start with? Well, um, I've done some work on the welder. Um, mm -hmm. The most important thing that I've done so far. Mm -hmm. IGBTs and MOSFETs. Mm -hmm. And I came across a MOSFET that can switch um, adequate power for 10 kilowatts. Mm -hmm. um, and it's much easier to use than IGBTs. Mm -hmm. It has lower losses. Mm -hmm. And it's much easier to drive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so e it's the, easier uh, to drive. I beg your pardon. It's easier to drive, and it's got faster rise time, faster switching. It's got much faster rise and fall time. Mm hmm Yep. And now that I've picked the uh, MOSFET, um, I've picked the dr gate drivers that will drive. Mm hmm And what what makes it easier? Um IGBTs when you turn them off, they're very slow. Um I mean they're very slow in terms of the switching speed. On the order of Gate 
driver that will work well with the device. Okay. Um, I felt still um, after the uh, MOSFET effect, the next major uh, component is the transformer. Mm -hmm. And um, it looks like the largest size of a ferrite core, uh, which is the uh, E100, um, will work well um, at the 10 kilowatt level. So I've also picked out a ferrite core that will work at the 10 kilowatt level. Okay, um, let's see, can you send, uh, let's see, uh, let's open up the Google Hangout. Do you have that link? Okay, let me get on there. So you can, can you send me the link to these parts? So, uh, if you go on a Google Hangout, that we are using. Do you have a link for that? Um, I have the individual data sheets. Okay. That's all I have. Okay, let me send you a link to. So, um, can you get on the. Oh, individual data sheets as PDFs? Yes. Um, is there an, any link online that has those? Okay, can you send that link over through the Google Hangout? I don't know how to do that. If you go to your email, I just sent you a link to the Hangout. And if you turn on the text chat, can you paste the link of those where you find, found those? Mm -hmm. I don't have the links handy because I've uh, been using the uh, downloaded data sheet. I see. Uh, what's the name of that? Um, maybe I can just Google that real quick. Okay. The um, switching fat device. Uh huh. It is um, an Infineon device, ITW 65R019. ITW 64, 65R019. Let's see if we can... Um, the easiest way to get a link is to look it up in DigiKey, I think. Yeah, I'm looking at DigiKey. So it's IT, T as in Tom, W. IT as in T-shirt. Uh-huh. W65, R as in Rob. R019. Uh, it's not finding it. Uh, IT, like like information technology. IT is in Peter. Okay. IP. P as in Paul. Okay, so I'm seeing these, 
There's. They're around thirty bucks. Uh huh. Yep, U.S. dollars twenty four bucks. Mm hmm. Okay. And there's the small package, small kind of package. Um, the TO two forty seven package. TO two forty seven. Mm hmm. Um, those leads are, I mean, they're like, how many amps? The cartridge rated for sixty two amps. Mm hmm. In actual fact, it will be running around uh, forty amps. Mm -hmm. 10 kilowatts. TO247. Let's see. Um, what are those dimensions? BL. So it's about, it's an under an inch for the height of this. It's like point, point 0.8 height of the body there. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. The gate drivers. I can give you a part number for them. Go ahead. A D U M seven two two three. They're an analog devices part. Okay. Um, I see it. Okay. Driver. So let's see. Um, okay. Got it. So there's a bunch of them, like ADAM 7223, like BC 7223. There's a number of them that have more letters after the 7223. Yes. Don't worry about that. Okay. Okay, that's also found at DigiKey. So I go to, if I'm on there, so search under E100 for them. Is that the adjuster core? Like, is uh, I look at um, search parameter, search description part number. Is there a description part number? E one hundred sixty twenty eight. What are those numbers? Um, they don't really matter much. Okay. The important thing is it's an E one hundred, and that number is common across a number of manufacturers, magnetic ink, um, and and uh, there's a Japanese company as well that makes it. Okay. And I've uh, designed the transformer. And the 
primary and secondary will go on nicely, leaving about, using about 80% of the window space for the winding, which is about what you want. Uh, 80% of the window space? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see, let me look at that PDF for that. So it's, um, how do we wind it? So we're just getting the core here? Yes. Have to wind the core. Uh-huh. And how is that done? By hand? Can it be done by hand or? Okay. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's on another computer that it doesn't have internet access at the moment. Um, but I have the turn ratio and the turns for the primary and secondary. Okay. Okay. And the primary, I'm not sure without that computer in front of me what it is. Um, I believe it's 29 turns. But don't hold me to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there we're going from, like what kind of, uh, we're switching at what voltage? Switching it at 25 amps? Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's see. And this 400 volts, where do we get this 400 volts? Wow. So, hold on a second. From 240, we get th about 360? We get 337, in fact, if you rectify the line. Okay. Um, how, does, how do you get that? If, how do you do that? Uh, from a 240 line?
which is going to make somebody down will make your transformer groan rather a lot. Whereas Power Factor Corrector would um, give you a power factor of around 0.99. Mm-hmm. I found the same set would work in the power factor corrector. And it, it takes in the AC 220 volt line or 240 volt line and puts out 390 volts. Three ninety volts is the peak. Um, let's see, three ninety volts. That's peak. Peak value. Yeah. No, that's that's the DC value. Um. Okay. I haven't calculated the ferrite for a power factor corrector yet. Mm hmm. Let's see. Um, can you can you explain how the power factor co correction works? What's the working mechanism? Like just the the concept. Is it actually getting heated up or something or Yes. Yes it does. It heats it as if you were actually drawing sixty amps of or fifty amps of uh, actual current. Even though you're only drawing twenty five amps, but you're drawing it out of phase. Yeah, and it's being simply wasted, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a power factor corrector draws power over the entire sign cycle. So it's in phase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so the concept is you, the power factor corrector through its mechanization, through its mechanism inside, you have capacitors that store the the charge at a particular time and re release it at a at another. It's basically delaying the like so that the phase ends up being in phase. No, the capacitors for power factor corrector are smaller than the capacitors for a direct rectifier. Um, what it does do is it draws power from the sine wave mm -hmm. all the way down to zero. Uh huh. So instead of just drawing it from the peaks of the sine wave, like a rectifier, it draws it for the entire sine cycle. Mm hmm. I see. Um, it draws it from the entire cycle and, um, which part of that mechanism takes the current back in phase with the voltage? Just, just forcing the current to be drawn from the uh, the uh, power factor corrector circuitry mm -hmm. has a multiplier in it mm -hmm. that multiplies the current times the voltage mm -hmm. and forces that to be a constant. Yeah, and and the way it happens is how? You post with modulate the line current. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. How does it do the step step up function? It's a boost converter. Mm -hmm. Okay, it makes somewhat sense. Yeah, okay, kind of see it. Um, um. I have uh, several switch mode power supply design books mm -hmm. that I use, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if you wanted the references. Yeah. Um, yeah, please. Okay, just a moment. Book one mm -hmm. is entitled Fundamentals of Power Electronics. Okay. Book by Ericsson and Max Timovic. Ericsson, there's Ericsson, Masonovic, it's M-A-K-S-I-M-O-V-I-C. That's a very good book. Mm -hmm. the other, one of the other books has a good section on power factor correctors. There's the switching power supply design. Mm -hmm. And another book is Switching Power Supply Design and Optimization. Optimization? Yes. Mm -hmm. By Manic Talent. M A N I K T A L A. The second one, switching mode power supply. Switching power supply design and optimization. The s and what was the second one? Sorry, I missed the second one. Switching. The first one was um, fundamentals of power electronics. 
Got that Second one. Switching power supply design. Switching power supply. Okay. By Pressman. Mm-hmm. And then there's switching power supply design and optimization by Matt Talent. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So we can look that up. Um, mm -hmm. I googled the first one. Uh, it appears to be a PDF online or Fundamentals of Power Electronics. I don't know. I have I have all three books. Uh huh. I have some others as well, but I think those are cover the ground quite thoroughly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So, let's see. Um, so we're looking at the. So today we were looking at the the MOSFETs versus IGBTs, we're deciding to run with MOSFETs for this particular application because they, they appear to be easier at the power level, um, easier and cheaper at the power level? Yes. And as far as how the, the our chip, our brain, drives them, um, let's see, did you, how far did you get on a circuit for the, the brain driver, actually? Is that... The, uh, is, sorry, that's the, the control board. Yeah. And that design is essentially done. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, can you send me a, an updated version of that file? Um, you ha I haven't changed the rows, so it's the same as last week. Okay. Let's see, let's see if it's here somewhere. Let's see, is that um, the PDF file? How about the source? Uh, so I'm, I'm looking at, no, no. Last week uh, I have a file that was the PDF of the power supply for the, um, the auxiliary power supply. Um, looking at the page. Um, I guess I have to look look back into manual. I, I don't think that. Do we ever succeed in getting that zip file through? No, no, we didn't. So, uh, how big was it? Was it more than fifty megabytes? You're cutting out. I'm not hearing you. Was that file size more than fifty megabytes? Oh, you should be able to send that through. Uh, can you zip it up and send it through email? I tried to send it through email and it didn't go. Hmm. And when you click... That's a zip file. Okay. Uh, can you go to the wiki and do... Um, do you have an account on the wiki? Um, can you... I asked for one, but I didn't get an acknowledgement. You didn't get an acknowledgement yet. Let me check on that right here. I was looking for that. Let's see, did I miss that? Oh, there it is. It says, uh, yeah, oh, that was 30th of September. Excellent. Okay, so you should be, should get a confirmation right now. I, I just uh, approved that. So, if you go to the wiki, can you try that right now? Do I have, I need a, uh, 
I think it sent you an email confirmation where if you now go to the wiki, you can click like log in with your. I don't have the email yet. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you go to, um, okay, first go to page one. I see that you're in the Power Electronics Construction Set document, right? Go to... I'm on the main page of the wiki. Okay, if you're on the main page, then just uh, look, search in a Google little uh, search box, Power Electronics Construction Set. Or I was going to put a link to that in on the main page of the document we're working on uh, the Google presentation. You want me to do it to go away from this page? Yeah, uh, if you want to, I can send. There's a link. I just put that into the front page of the main working document. Uh, I see that you're on on page 19 of the working document, the welder. So if you go to page one, go up, there's a, I put a big link to the wiki page, which has, um, page one? Yeah. Yeah. Page. So click the wiki page that takes you to the power electronics construction set page. And, um, on the very top of that is the downloads and that's the, there's the file in red power electronic construction. Okay, Yep, so click on that and it should ask you to upload. Then choose file and then upload it. If it's a zipped file. I get a page that says edit, downloads, edit. Downloads, edit. Text controller, dot zip. What happened when you just click on that? Did it take you to an upload file page? No. Oh, here we are. Yeah, so you're there. That file upload, so you can upload it. Okay, so it uploaded it? Yep. Okay, let me see if I can download it now. Text controller does it. Uh-huh. Okay. Let me see if I can download it. Okay. Here. 
Okay, so it's it's the modulator two, and it's showing me um, that's CSH, that PDF, KiCad. So this is in KiCad. Yes. Okay. Um, let's see if this opens up. Let me see if I can open up in KiCad. So I'm opening up KiCad and Ubuntu. I should be able to open up which file of those? There's there's a dot keycad underscore mod file. Is that the one? No. That's a uh, library that it uses with library parts. Mm hmm So if I open up keycad, which file of the ones in that folder Uh huh. What's the reason to do SCH? Okay, so CPU.sh, for example? Um, or modulator 2 to the SCH. Modulator 2, okay. Open modulator and desktop. Um, okay, let's see. So, in, look at this. In KiCad, I'm doing file open, and I'm going to the modulator to folder. The only ones that it's highlighting for me is modulator two dot pro and the folder named sim. Is that? Uh huh. That's the profile for the uh, project solved in that. Okay. It appears to be opening up here. Let's see. Um, wait. Okay, here it looks like we got it. So, um, Oh yeah, so it opens up this, I see, so the dot .pro file appears to be the keycat file, it's got all the, all the content, all the, it's got the modulator 2, it's got the connector, um, pen out, let's see, sim models, symbols, um, so the modulator two dot profile is the one that should have this. What I need. That's the project file. And the dot sch files. If you open the schematic editor. Mm hmm. You can read there are three or there are four schematics. Okay, I guess I need to get used to this, because um, uh, I opened up that... Um, with, the, with the dot pro open, you should have a, uh, a window with uh, schematic option and uh, PCB options. Let me try that again. Okay. Okay, so I got KiCad Modulator Pro. Okay, so maybe you can walk me through it. So I have the Modulator Pro file, so do I... It's inside KiCad already with... Um, okay, so you see... Um, there should be a set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 windows or buttons in KiCad. Yeah, there's. I got six buttons there. Okay, if you look at the first button, mm -hmm. it'll say like 
electronic schematic editor. Yep. Just click on that. Okay. Um, it says this file is already open. And I'm viewing, there's another window that opened up called Modulator 2, and it has these three three things. It says CPU, okay. sheet power, those sheet things, CPU. Th those are um, schematics themselves. Uh-huh. So if you click on, say, the first one. Power. Right-click right -click on it and call it Enter Sheet. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. We've got the, what, the power supply? Mm-hmm. Yep. Got it. If you, um, there's an icon on the top of your screen with three bars in it. Icon with three bars. Yeah. Uh, no, the one looks like a tree. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And you should get a window with root, power, CPU, and canvas. Yep. Next, click on CPU. Uh huh. That'll change sheets. Oh, yeah. Sure did. Okay. Very nice. Um. So the CPU now stands as that's, that's good, right? That's. Mm-hmm. And the can bus, if you click on the same icon. Uh-huh. Yep. If you click on can bus, you get the I.O. The can bus I.O. Yeah. The miscellaneous I.O. Okay. And this is a way to, let's see... There's an LCD collector con connector in there, and um, let's see. What are these connections going to be made to on the CAN bus? So that's whatever. Yeah, I can't really read this. So, so as far as the CAN bus, um, is this does this plug into the CPU somehow? I see those four, like for example on the U3, there's a bunch of, um, I see the CAN bus, the actual plug, male and female, and on that one there's a U th ISO 1050, is that a chip? Mm -hmm. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, what does that go to there? Those go to the CPU page. Uh, go to the CPU page. How do I identify those connections? Oh yeah, so it'll be labeled if I go into CPU, it'll tell me where the CAN bus connections are. You'll see those names. So there's SCLA, CAN RXA, and CAN TXA. Um, so on that chip, I'm seeing like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, wh what? If I'm looking at the CAN bus diagram, how do I identify which? Like, say on the CAN bus there, how which? I don't see those labels that you just mentioned. I see like VCC one, RX zero, TDX. Um, on the uh, which page are you looking at? So I'm looking at CAN bus. Uh, can RXA and can TXA on the left side of the ISO 1050. On the left side? There's a, a line called can RXA and can TXA. I don't see that. Um, I'm seeing the lines, red lines 1, 2, 3, 4, those pins, and then it has the green lines that go, they're not labeled in any way. There's a capacitor C31 between two of those. 
But otherwise, they they just end at points without any labels. On my version, they have labels. Um, is there something like hidden labels or something? Or hmm. Let's see. Uh, let me email you a screenshot here, real quick. See if that's this is uh, supposed to be what I. Okay, I just send that to you. See if that's that's what you have on your screen. What system are you using, Ubuntu? Yes. So CAN bus is gonna be data like between like for example if I have is this the kinda like the synchronization part? So if I had another device, like say, um, multiple, oh yeah, so so we've got the CPU brain and you can be basically with this CAN bus, you can be controlling any number of devices that you like, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I think, uh, mm hmm okay. All right. Did that email come through? Not yet. So the CPU, we've got, um, so we've got the big header connection. And when we connect it to the, say, the welder, are we going to be using a 60-pin connector? Or a partial number of pins. Sixty pin. Okay. Sixty pin connector. Mm-hmm. How much more circuitry? So there's the um there's the IG not the IGBT, the MOSFET that we're talking about, there's the transformer core. There's the gate drivers, and beyond that, the welder circuit. Um, there's other elements, like for example, the gun feed and all that, like the gas turn on, things like that. That's all going to be on the board that's going to be with the welder, right? Yes. Mm hmm. Okay. Perhaps useful would be. Um, well, there, one side is the circuit, but the second part is all the connections. What what all are the different connections to that, you right? There are no signal names on your uh, hmm. schematic. Um, that's probably due to a difference in version number. Oh, okay. Um, um, you need to update to the latest uh -huh. version of KiCad. Oh, okay. Let me it see. It's a black screen, I noticed. Uh huh. That's an old version. Yeah. Nowadays the screen is white. Okay. So let's see if I got that. I can do that here. Um. With KiCad, you need to update. There's a PPA. Uh huh. For uh, KiCad. Okay. Does that? Meaning that's not done through, is that done through the Ubuntu Software Center? Um, after you've um, connected to the PCA, then it is. Uh huh. Uh, can you send me a link, uh, like a command line link to add that PPA? Let's see, so how'd I, so I would, I would go to say the keycad, let's see, keycad PPA. Um, do I want the PPA for daily builds? Yes. 
Are those stable or typically not? It's very stable. Okay, so I can go um, by adding PPA. Uh, how do I do that through the command line? Let's see. Oh, here we go. So, trusty 14.04 is what I have. Okay, so then display source dot list deb so it gives me the, this line deb the source list where would I put that in there's a file I have to insert that into um, if you double click on it, it that should not oh I'm at um, so there's this PPA JS dot dash ray nod slash PPA dash keycad so, how do I add that to the sources? Oh, just go to, let's see, that's in um, Software you Center? Go to, you go to Sources. And um, add that as a source. Uh, is that under Ubuntu Software Center? I use um, Synaptic myself. Um... Package Manager. Um, how do I access Synaptic here? I've got. See, I think it gets me a little confused. So there's Ubuntu Software Center, all software. Um, Under repositories. Let me just Google how do I add P a PPA to Ubuntu. Uh, okay, Ubuntu edit. Okay, so it's like in the Open the Ubuntu Software Center. Okay. And then mouse over the top panel to reveal the application menu. Okay, okay. Edit view. In the edit menu select software sources. Okay, yep, there it is. Okay, okay, okay. So now, uh, under... Under other... Where'd I go? Updates or authentication, additional drivers? Other software? Add? Okay, let's see. So I need to get those uh, app to line. Okay, so trust. Okay, yeah, so it's deb.
Ubuntu trusty main. There's two, um, there's one deb and there's one deb-src. Do I need both of those? No, you just need the deb. What's the deb-src? That's the source. Okay, and this is what I want is like just the compiled stuff? Yeah. Okay. That looks like it makes sense, so... I think uh, so I added that and then just close that let's see so now in the software center um, key catch the new newest version should appear yeah. okay so it says it's all installed like I, I searched for it and it's all installed do I need to like shut down or something or Where's, how do I access Synaptic pack, Package Manager? Is that an application right now, or...? Yeah, it's a, uh, a package manager. Right, where did I find it? It used to be on the former version. I can't find it anymore. Where, where did I find it on 1404? Un under your software sensor, it looks for Synaptic, S-Y-N-A-P-T-I-C. Um... Synaptic, let's see. Uh, I mean, here it shows all software, Ubuntu, Canonical Partners for purchase, FreeCAD, it's not in there. Let's see, installed Canonical Partners for purchase. It's not, I'm not seeing any, uh, where's Synaptic in, in Ubuntu Software Center? Don't see it. So, oh, there it is. There's. Oh wait. So I have to download Synaptic Package Manager. Oh, okay. Because it. Okay. I'll install it. Okay. Now there we go. Got it. It's installing. Um, yeah. I used to. So instead of um, whenever you up upload new software, you you typically use Synaptic Package Manager. Than Ubuntu Software Center. Yeah. Yeah, because the Ubuntu Software Center's got too much, too much fluff in there. Appears. Okay, so I can update the KiCad file to the latest version here, and. Um, um, if you go to, uh, can you open Synaptic yet? Um, it's almost downloaded. It's like three quarters, ninety percent. Okay, so I can. Okay, I can go into Synaptic. Okay, I got it. I'm in Synaptic. Okay, go to uh, settings repositories. Okay. Settings, repositories. Um, there's, so if I go, when I go to settings and I go to repositories, it opens up a window that says software and updates. And then where'd I go? If you, if you scroll in that window, that's a window labeled repositories. 
I don't see the where's the window labeled repository. It, oh, okay, there's a window with an other software. There's the tabs of Ubuntu software, other software, updates, authentication, additional drivers. I don't see that. Hmm. I guess a uh, window with repositories. Okay. Let's see. Um... I do get a... Okay, okay, so yeah, I do see that thing with the different repositories, okay? But I was in the same window. So which? So look for KiCad. Mm -hmm. So for KiCad, it has a bunch of KiCad doc, then Kino. There's a bunch of doc documentation files for KiCad. Um, let's let me see. So in Synaptic Package Manager, Settings, there's Repositories, and it opens up the Software and Updates window with Ubuntu Software, Other Software, Updates, Authentication. But if I don't do that, if I just do Synaptic Package Manager, um, it gives me a window with a lot of different packages. Mm-hmm. And Titan will be one of those. Okay, let's see if I can... So for KiCad, I get a bunch of KiCad-doc files. Uh, there's KiCad, KiCad Common. So which one? KiCad DBG and then mark for upgrade. Aha, so it gives me a... Under KiCad and KiCad Common, it has exclamations, and under one I can mark for upgrade. Okay. Mark for upgrade. Okay. So, and then apply, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So it looks like it's doing it. Okay, so it was, it had the, the exclamation point on it, that means upgraded. Okay, that's good. So it's doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's more straightforward because it lists all those packages there. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so that's doing it, it's going to take a bit of time. So, assuming we get the same documents that we're looking at, um, what what are our next steps here? The next step is um, to decide whether or not to use a power factor corrector. Well, I think we should, right? So, to save a lot of energy? Like, are we talking about wasting 
a lot of power. Yeah. Um, In order to run 10 kilowatts without a power factor corrector, I would be a little worried. Right. Uh, and is this unique to the to the MOSFETs, or this would have happened in any case? Um, it would be any case. Right. Yeah. So we have to do that, right? Mm-hmm. And I haven't, um, the same MOSFETs will work in the power factor corrector, but I haven't yet done the, uh, transformer, the inductor that it will require. So I don't yet know whether the inductor's a reasonable size. That's my next step. Uh, so this is the inductor in the... So like you have the transformer within the welder, there's an inductor there? in the power factor corrector. The power factor corrector will in effect be a module. And we could, uh, it'll be the same for uh, a plasma cutter. Mm -hmm. It'll be the same for an induction heater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my suggestion is to make it a module. Definitely. Okay. Okay. It'll work with hybrid. But high power levels, the power company will be unhappy. In other words, whenever you're running it, you're, you're putting all that heat into the transformer? Mm -hmm. Isn't that transformer going to blow up? 